Hey everyone, Pastor George here coming at you for our final and fifth theologue this week concerning apologists. And today I'm going to do one of the people that I ran into in college online and I think is really important. Uh, and I'll also do two honorable mentions at the end of the video for people to also check out on their own time. But uh, unfortunately, I, I can't fit everyone in in five days. And so I kind of just chose the people that have been very impactful to me, though one of them is one of the honorable mentions is intrinsically related to this person. So my favorite, uh, well, my, what became my favorite think, uh, apologist for some time during college was a guy by the name of Nabil Qureshi. And I think Nabil Qureshi is really important because he grew up Muslim and then became a Christian. And his story is really, really interesting. I'm going to put his testimony video and also he does a Q&A in the description box of this video so you can check him out. I think he's really important to look at and to think about. But uh, besides that, uh, the reason he's so important is because he's kind of the first person to really, really put a lot of energy into studying, or not studying because he grew up Muslim, but, but uh, doing apologetics towards Muslims, who are the second largest religion on the planet, with like 1.6 billion people in them, but something that Christians have largely kind of ignored, um, mainly because they, again, they weren't part of the Western context. Because as we saw with Ravi Zacharias on Tuesday, Ravi Zacharias kind of reminded everyone that there's all these other beliefs out there. And Nabil was actually picked up by Ravi Zacharias later in his career, uh, and he ended his career there as well. But he uh, also uh, was part of Act 17 Apologetics, which is still going on YouTube and is still uh, very um, prolific, but mainly focused on apologetics towards Muslims. Uh, and he then eventually switched over to uh, Ravi Zacharias, where he still did Muslim stuff, but also just more general apologetics also. And he would also go around and go and sp go to speaking engagements and engage with people. Um, so it's really, really interesting because he does a really good job of showing the cost of Christianity because in many Muslim families and in, in religions that have very strong cultures that surround them, to weave the faith is to f essentially forsake your family. Now, luckily, he he didn't get that too bad, but he got it quite quite bad, and uh, and he does a good job of talking about that in a lot of his speeches and his book. His book is really good, also. I think it's worth checking out. I think it's called uh, "Seeking Allah, Finding Jesus." Really, really good. A short read. If you can get the audiobook version, that's even better because he narrates it and he has a few other people join him in narrating it and it's it's a really good experience. But the book itself is, is good too. So definitely worth checking him out. The reason that he's kind of sad is that he was one of the he, he was he died and he died when he was like 35, 36 and he had a, a young daughter at the time. And it was really, really sad and also uh, was kind of personally very uh, difficult for me because I hear I saw a guy that was doing all this great work in this field that no one else was doing it in uh, and he died right and well now we don't have or so I thought now we don't have anyone to do this type of work um, but it was then that I realized that he had inspired a lot of people um, myself included though I'm obviously not a big celebrity or whatever to start studying Islam with a lot more intention and learning about it and now there's people who do all sorts of apologetics towards Muslims all over the internet and out in person and it's really really good and, and it's not that he started all that but he's kind of the one that brought the most attention to it and got a lot of people into studying it and into reaching out to their Muslim friends which I think is important for us to do here in this section of New Jersey because there are a lot of Muslims here. Uh, as I pointed out in one of my other theologues, as I was riding down the highway, we have a billboard, right, advertising uh, becoming a Muslim. And it's, it's a big thing in this, in this part of uh, New Jersey. And so I think it would be smart of all of us to try and learn as much as we can about this because we're going to run into people that have different beliefs than us and we need to know uh, what our differences are uh, and you know how to engage with them in a way that is loving them uh, but also making sure that we you know stake our ground out and i think he does that really well and someone who's intrinsically related to this story is david wood who is the big runner at act 17 apologetics and i'll link that channel in the description below as well 
Um, he's much more polemical, just a heads up, than most people. But he's a lot of fun, and I think he all, he just makes really, really good arguments. He has really interesting testimony, too. But he was the one that Nabil Qureshi became friends with in college, and it was their discussions back and forth that made Nabil uh, become start questioning his faith and eventually led him to Christianity. And David, who had no interest in Islam, learning a lot about it, and now it's his passion to try and reach these people. So he's definitely something worth checking out. Uh, another person worth checking out who's very, very talented is William Lane Craig, and he's kind of like the the intellectual, um, if, if you will, the, the intellectual apologist. And he's very, very well-versed in theology and philosophy, and he's kind of the one that you want to bring out to debate the – not so much to debate people like Richard Dawkins or Christopher Hitchens or stuff like that. He's much better at really going and debating people who are philosophically atheists or philosophically opposed to Christianity, kind of like the, the, the university professor type people. That's who William Lane Craig is really, really effective at uh, debating with. Uh, people who aren't quite at that level – it's just uh, kind of a slaughter <laughs> a lot of the time. There's not much going on. So he's smart. We're checking out either. Lots of his debates are up on YouTube, and many of those are good. So that's the apologist for this week. I hope this has been illuminating to you, giving you some stuff to read, hopefully. And I will see you next week with another topic.